All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll go back here for yet another cast here of awesome Brood War epic proportion here for the D-Ranks King of Thrones tournament here, spawning here at the nine o'clock position as a brown Protoss, our computer for the crone for to take down to snipe off the current king. It will be Ice Draco for the purpose of this cast. I'm just going to call him Draco. So Ice Draco, if you want to be called Ice or Draco. Don't take any harm in me making fun of you or anything like that. And then at our 3 o'clock position as our orange Tyrant, it'll be Obelisco right here. Like the 6 or the 5 win reigning champion. This guy's good. Uh, and we'll see how he will do. Um, I don't know how he fares against Protoss. We've seen his Zer We've seen the Zerg and we've seen his... I recall the last two games I've casted because I only kind of remember recent games. Uh, he has won against... Oh, uh, we're going to cheat. We're gonna have a proxy two gate in base. Okay. Well, all right. Well, whatever. Okay, whatever. Whatever floats you. Actually, I don't even know what is he doing. Why is he going that way? Okay, so um, it looks like he's gonna do like a proxy base uh, two gate uh, in base uh, proxy two gate. We'll see if that's gonna be effective or not. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, HBR has kind of been known for its um, cheesy, its cheesy play style. You know, you can. You know, put. Oh, okay, no, he's not gonna do in base. What you can actually do is you can actually, if you put your D, uh, pile on over here, you can actually get in here and put down two gateways down here. But uh, just putting it in some other location, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a remote location anyway. He does got the gas deal. Um, you know, the, it, you can kind of read in this. I, I don't want to. I, I don't like reading into it too much because good players can actually just go for the gas deal anyway and then not even follow up with the two gate. But generally, this means that they're going to be going for an, like a, a zealot first build. It looks like it'll only, only be a proxy one gate, so it won't be like a full on cheese. But just really trying to start applying some pressure right here. Obelisco is actually might be scouting that direction. We'll see if he does. Um, this um, actually, I don't believe is tight. Um, I believe you have to put down a depot, um, which can make it. Um, uh, yeah, so we'll see if he can defend this. Uh, it, it, as it is only being one uh, one zealot, uh, we'll see. I, you know, he actually kind of walled that area off, and I, again, I don't even know if that's going to be tight. But um, it's, yeah, it's not zealot tight for sure. If that SCV got out, then uh, definitely. So we'll see what the follow up is going to be. But I was going to talk about um, we've only I only remember like really recent games that I cast, so I don't really remember Obelisco playing a Protoss. He probably has. I mean, the launch course this. Oh, and he gets the. Well, I don't even know what the pile off. Get the pile and gonna stop any kind of depot being thrown down. Um, but the Zealot, I believe, would actually have more DPS um, to take it down anyway. But uh, anyway, the, the fact of the matter is that he's gonna at least get two kills. Um, if he's not careful. Um, Probe has been killed off, and we're just trying to kill off that pylon right now. A pylon um, will not be tight with anything um, unless it's just like uh, directly on top of a mineral patch. Um, or can he actually not get through? Can he? I'm sure that Zealot can get through, and he's gonna get up a uh, bunker. Um, that's actually a really nice position right there. It'll cover pretty much everything that he wants to. And this is actually really annoying, but you know, also keep in mind that there's nothing back at home base for our good friend uh, Draco right now. And he's just trying to roam around the map right now, uh, seeing what he can do. Um, he's probably gonna throw down the gas and start getting goons. Uh, and we'll see. Obel still hasn't. I mean, Obelisco has been anti-cheat so far, you know, defending up a 5 pool on a 1v1 map. Um, has to go on, you know, another 1v1 map, which is unfortunate because it does lead cheese most of the time, I would say. At least in D-Ranks it does. <laughs> um, but there's only Marines out now. I mean, he can kite this actually if he has good Marine Mecro. Um, yeah, it's pretty good. It's pretty good. I mean, he hasn't lost one and nice kiting right there and he got, uh, got rid of that. So that Zealot is done, uh, he's gonna still try to produce another Zealot right now, he's not really gonna accomplish much anything. Uh, the thing though is that he, there's no gateway back at home base, uh, just throwing down another one. Um, and this pylon's at risk too, so it, it's, there's definitely a risk of throwing down a proxy, especially if it's found. Uh, but to this point, uh, if he gets up like spider mines quickly, or a tank, or pretty much any kind of like mechan unit, he will be fine. Um, now, of course, I wouldn't be that smart in this situation. I'd probably be like, all right, I'm going to go throw, it, throw down three racks and then try to pressure. Obviously, that's not the way you deal with this. The way you deal with this is just take up to uh, you know, factory tech and then just get up like a 
either patrol micro around with a vulture, get a tank with siege mode, um, do a siege expand ish. It looks like that will be the choice of option. Obelisco isn't. He's more of a just calculated player than anything else. Um, it reminds me a lot like of um, Dr. Shrinker and the C ranks and the YSL. I mean, that guy was really well calculated. And Obelisco is kind of doing the same thing right here. Um, and we're trying to focus fire that pylon. That won't be a little bit of risk. We'll lose one. Marine may lose another one on the retreat right here. The bunker will go up finally, or will be up. Uh, the Zealots probably could just run right by, but it looks like they will choose to just walk right around that. And. Yep. Um, actually, did throw. Actually, did opt to go down for a second factory. Um, what you could do, um, theoretically, um, it's risky. Um, it's something that I would probably experiment with because I like using bio a lot. Um, going throwing down an academy and then going for a quick stim and throwing down like three racks because that would definitely catch your opponent off guard because they're they. They, they don't have anything. They really don't have anything. and start pressuring, and then you hit with stim. Um, at least that might be something you could consider, um, because that stim timing push would actually hit right right around now. Um, and actually, it's getting full gas right now, so which may lead to either a a one tank, and then we'll just follow into expansion, or it may just be vultures um, as well, um, as he only has one on gas right now. Um, just conspicuous, conspicuous. Um, but it looks like he actually just will expand, um, which is totally fine as well. Um, you know, playing it safe. You know, he, he's gotten this far. He, this will be his sixth win if he does play this, you know, correctly, of course. Um, but, I mean, honestly, if he... He may not know it, but if he was to actually pressure with any kind of mech games right now, if he, if he threw down... You know, another barracks or another factory and produced units really quickly, I think he'd probably kill up first. If he didn't mess up his, you know, attacking mode. But otherwise, I think he would be fine. But in a way, it's kind of equaled out because now we're at a two gate goon into Robo. Um, you know, adding the Robo was a little, a little quick, but, uh, because you generally probably wouldn't put down an expansion before that. But, I mean, we're, it's actually kind of moderated into a, you know, a standard game with a proxy gate where you just really close it. So, regular timings, you know, obviously not going to be, you know, that standard anymore. But the, the, the timing in game will be different, but the timings in general will probably be around the same consistency around that kind of timing. You get what I'm saying? Because it actually kind of looks really like that, just with a, an influx amount of marines and stuff like that. So you're just kind of put in an odd situation. Um, but the benefit to this kind of scenario is that both players know how to play it. So, in that regards, I would say that, you know, it, it's fairly equal. Because, I mean, I, I, I'm i going to put up these both players as equal players because they're both D-Ranks. And, I, I mean, Obel is good, good. I'm just not sure if he's good enough to beat some random... I, I, I don't... I don't have enough knowledge of a Bell's good to be like, all right, he's just gonna win every time. It's a, he's a solid player. Don't get me wrong. He's a good D ranks player, and he may be even on the verge of you know, getting past D plus. But I'm not gonna count out um, Ice Draco um, either because I mean, really, nothing has led to the downfall of Draco whatsoever. I mean, he's he's played it you know fairly well. I mean, he's actually lost and he lost to Cheesy. Now he's actually containing Terra. To, to, to in a degree. Now, if Terran, you know, pushes out with all these Marines and, you know, three tanks, you know, they definitely would have to push back, but the fact is that he's actually being aggressi uh, ag aggressive right now. Terran's not, um, which is, again, it's a, tr it's a play style that we'll see we'll, if it will be effective for, you know, Obelisco. Optimally, you'd probably want to, you know, pressure if you knew that you're in such a lead. Um, but if he's gonna play it extra safe, well be it. I mean, he's played extra safe. Um, he's played this playstyle. He's won five games in a row. Um, I don't think you can really complain about this guy's playstyle. Um, because he's not on a losing streak by any means. He's on a winning streak, so. Um, but, uh, back at Protoss, base set at, at Protoss HQ, what do we have right here? We have two gates, and we have the, um, Observer. We do have a shuttle, of all things. Uh, could be for Zealot, probably for Zealot bombing. Uh, only issue is that there, well, there's, okay, so there's four, there's gonna probably be a fourth Zealot coming out soon. Um, looks like we do have a third base being established right now. A fairly quick one. Um, you want to put considerations, like a, a quick one, a quick third probably be, 
you know, seven minutes. Um, it's now nine or ten minutes of the game, but again, the timings are off by such a degree. Oh, and we're going to have a deep six. Bio Bells go, of all things, actually. A deep six is a build that you go, um, see these turrets? Um, they're designed to keep observers out. The only thing is he kind of failed to do that, and, um... So actually, this OBS actually does know that it is a deep six. Um, a deep six is kind of, yeah, it's it's a cheesy strat. I would because it's you really kind of have to. It's kind of like going like a mutilisk main. Uh, if you, unless you're like so, put example Zerg versus Protoss. Let's say for that way, and you want to go a mid game mutilisk army. That's kind of circumstantial. It's going to be effective because you need to be active with it. You need to kind of catch your opponent off guard so they're not ready to defend. And we have this elevating action going on, which I'm not really sure if you need me to commentate. But the fact is, it's kind of the same thing what a deep six does because you really need to catch your opponent off guard because, or else they're just going to get reversed. Um, and I'm probably, start, I'm assuming we're probably going to see a support bay going down. Um, we do have a citadel of all things actually going down. So, well, I mean, he may not even know it's a deep six for all we know, um, which would be problematic. Um, but this is actually gonna do. I mean, he, does he actually not know of this? I don't think he knows about this. Well, actually, again, because I, I have a really wide angle shot, so <laughs> we would probably see like this corner of the screen right now, and that's probably about it. Um, you didn't really see a lot when you're in regular redor mode, but uh, we'll see if this does. I mean, it's a handful of units. We'll have to force a cancel or force a move out of units. And the problem though is, I mean, he really kind of crammed his building from the north part of his base, so that. Units are gonna kind of funnel in, in in single file right now. He will try to siege up his tank right now. Um, we'll kill off the academy before Stim's done, which is gonna be a huge nuisance. Doesn't get the cancel on the Stim right now, and that's actually a really big issue for a deep six build because really, what you want to start doing is a deep six. The longer your opponent doesn't know about it, the better. So generally, you want to kind of want to hit that six barracks timing, maybe plus one. And with stim medic and tank uh, tank support and really just go hard uh, you 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 can play you know if you're a good enough bio user you can you can go into the mid and late stages game of deep six um it's the kind of like sk style in, in Taran versus zerg um it's difficult to pull off um again i really like the strategy because it's bio and mixed in with with protest but i mean once the reavers come out it's very difficult to actually use this um, effectively and it looks like Obelisco will be pushing out here to see with this deep six will it work um, he does get high Templar that is another very good hard counter to this because I mean you can't micro red a storm it's just not possible the only the good thing though for uh, oh we, we have a DT in the mix right here oh no he lost like five Marines right there um, that's not good um, but that really just delayed his uh, push right there, uh, which will live allow for more time for more High Templars to get it and just more units in general. Um, so the High Templar tech switch is, uh, or, you know, going that is totally fine. Our cards are pretty good as well. Um, they're kind of harder to get in there. It looks like actually we will have a slow push of sorts, um, but the stim happened somewhere. No, no, that wasn't storm, sorry. That was a pylon morphing in right here. So we have Protoss more, um, pushing up the stuff right here. Terran does have a good amount of DPS right on this cliff right here. Can the Marines focus fire down the Zealots? That's the question. Um, or will there just be too many goons? Is that amount of goons? Oh, it looks like he will be able to hold. Um, and man, he's going strong with the amount of production he can do. Um, one problem with the Deep Six um, that you, you, you wouldn't necessarily have in, in say, StarCraft 2 is because you can just hotkey all your barracks together. Um, which doesn't, which is kind of like an issue with this build because you have to be so active with your units. It's kind of hard to go put on like a building, a production facility to help pressing M really quickly. Um, it's not the easiest thing. Um, which is why for low APM players, this isn't the most, uh, the most easiest thing. And I believe, um, what's his face hits around, uh, 140 ish, which is actually very similar to mine. So Obelisco is actually is really, really nice. I kind of just generally barrel my way through here. He's, he's slow pushing, but again, he needs to get these high Templar shots off, like, ASAP. The problem is he just doesn't have the numbers to actually just deal with the tanks. Um, and he does get a storm, but on the tanks, though, not the Marine, which are the issue, because they'll just stim and kill everything. Um, so Obelisco has pulled off a deep six very effectively, uh, and, you know, this is kind of the... This is kind of the most... And see how effective Storm is? You don't have to double, you don't have to double Storm, but you see how effective that was? Uh, but kind of showing what you can do with the Deep Six build, actually, in this game. Uh, 
you know, I, I can't guarantee it's gonna win you. I'm not, I'm not gonna guarantee it's gonna end like this for every game. Um, because it, for me at least, never does. But again, I'm a D minus playing player, so I have a long ways to go to improve. Pretty cool stuff. It looks like he did go in here and killed off some stuff. There wasn't too many probes in here though. Oh, we have a we have a storm killing off some stuff right here. I'm just trying to check. He killed off like seven probes up there. Um, I didn't catch sight of that. I apologize. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's just going strong right now. He's just killing off a whole bunch of stuff right now. Can you get a storm off? Uh, and you know, you know, generally I don't see high templars used as a as a hard counter. Um, and the reason being is that this isn't a pure bio build. If it's a pure bio build, then go for it. But with tanks with such a high range, you can just you can tar you can just direct fire high templar before they can get storm range of your bio if you're if you're careful. Once you clear up all the high templar, you're good to go. Reavers, on the other hand, you can kind of micro them back and forth in in, in and out of the reaver, uh, of the shuttle, which is really effective. Um, but uh, Draco is definitely in a lot of trouble right now. Um, I would I would assume it's a matter of time that he's gonna go into um. Going into a uh, GG soon. I mean, as he's like at the front door with bunkers and shit. I mean, like this is like this feels like campaign. Um, and this is third base on the way. So very interesting. ZVP. Oh, he even has a he even has a scout. Um, I think he realized he's lost. Um, but hey, man, a scout may be able to pull a le uh, win here. Um, if people, for anyone that doesn't doesn't understand sarcasm, then understand it because that is not what I meant. I say some pretty stupid things on my cast, but that's definitely not one of them. That was not an intentional stupidity. That storm is actually really good, trying to break through this, but there's just too much mech. There's too much bio. There's too much deep six and happening. GG by Draco. GG from Obelisco. Very entertaining game. Very uh, interesting to watch. Definitely, I would put this under recommended games for the uh, VOD page. Um, I thought it was a pretty good game. Uh, deep six is a. Uh, what made this game that much more entertaining was the fact that he negated a two gate or a one gate, you know, pressure or whatever, and then even de decided to go opt for a build that wasn't even standard, which is, or as standard, I guess, as like, you know, two base mech or three base mech or whatever. So I like your style of Bellisco. Um, game number 10, game number 10 coming up uh, momentarily, guys. Thanks for watching and Puka signing out. Peace.